Now we have learned the consequences when there is no father. And what we want to do now is introduce the subject of the fathers as family shepherds. Without a father, the children's chance of living in poverty is exponentially increased by 500%. Drug and alcohol abuse will be high and physical and mental health will be poor, educational achievement compromised, crime will be increased and sexual perversion are merely byproducts of what happens when there's no father. But the question is, why should we have family shepherds? And uh, look at what God says. I will set up shepherds over them which shall lead them. There's the first thing. Children will have leadership. And look at this. And they shall fear no more. And those children will not be dismayed. And look at this. And look at this. And neither shall they lack anything, saith the Lord. Now, this word shepherd is a biblical word for leadership. Shepherd applies to different scopes of leadership. There's national leadership and state and county and city and church and family. It requires some God-likeness. God is called the Heavenly Father, but here's the root of the Father problem. Look at this scripture with me. And it begins with an exclamation, a cry for help. And that's what you and I ought to be doing as we understand these truths together. Help, God, help us. Help, Lord. Now, here's why. For the godly man ceases to be. For the faithful men fail among the children of men. Now, let's get this godly part really straight. Godly simply means good and ungodly means bad. The reason why we have a father problem is because we have a failure of godly men. Godly men have ceased to be in large dimension. Now, I want you to see this verse again, but most of all, I want you to grasp this idea that true fatherhood, that is being a shepherd to your family, begins with godly manhood. Look at scripture again. Help, Lord, for the godly man ceases to be. Whatever happened to godliness and whatever happened to faithfulness? We learn two things really from this verse. One, the problem of fatherhood is a lack of godliness. And secondly, it's a lack of faithfulness because to be godly means to be faithful. Lord, help, for the godly man ceases to be and the faithful fail among the children of men. And so what we want to do now is ask ourselves, what are the causes of this ungodly manhood which causes father failure? Which means fathers who don't shepherd, don't lead their children their wife, their family. So what are the causes of godly, uh, ungodly manhood? Now, this scripture started with Psalm 12, and it goes on now to tell us exactly a description of what men are like that causes this ungodly and unfaithful condition. So here we go. Number one, um, men are centered on what does not matter. Their talk, look at them, they speak vanity. Every one of them to his neighbor. Every time they talk to somebody, every time they talk to somebody, what are they talking about? They're talking about stuff that doesn't matter. They're talking about the weather, the recent sports event, movies, television programs, Hollywood, personality stars. They're talking about national politics and all kinds of, they're talking about stuff that doesn't matter. That is the surest sign of an ungodly man because a godly man has got an agenda that leads him to talk about stuff that's really important, important to his wife, 
important to his son and important to his daughters. It begins with men who don't talk about important things. They speak vanity. And secondly, they talk politically correct. Now, this is a common term today, but I fear that what is called politically correct is, is just a disguise for what is morally corrupt. Ungodly men say what other people they think want to hear. Now, the Bible calls that flattery. And the scripture teaches that a flattering tongue works ruins. Look at the scripture now. They speak vanity and with flattering lips. They just say what everybody wants to hear. Don't make any waves. Don't talk about any issues. How often have you heard? Don't talk about religion. I don't talk about religion. Let me tell you something. We need to talk about it. And we need to get it right. Ungodliness in a man begins with a man who talks about what doesn't matter. And, he, and when he talks, he talks with flattering lips. He says what people wants to hear. And then look at this, because they speak with a double heart. Ooh, with a double heart do they speak. Oh, in other words, a situational ethics kind of a deal. You talk to this person, you know he wants to hear about that, so you talk about that, but over here you don't. And so you become selective and he ends up with a split personality disorder, often called by psychologists dissociative identity disorder. Double heart. In fact, the scripture, Jesus put the question, he says, you generation of vipers. Sometimes Jesus used some pretty strong words, didn't he? How can you, being evil, speak good things? Look at this. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. And so what we have here is uh, men who speak out of a double heart. Sound, they got, they got it going in one moment, but it's not sincere. They are hip, hypocritical, double-hearted, which is worse than even being double-minded. And then their words reveal an exalted ego. They got an ego a mile high. The Lord shall cut off all, look at this, flattering lips, and the tongue that speaks proud, oh, the pride shows through. That's the opposite to godliness. For a godly man is meek, not proud. And you know what? The ungodly men think they can talk their way out and through everything. Look at this. They have said with our tongue, we will prevail. Don't worry about it because they're used to talk, 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 talking their way through it. Now, this leads us to probably the greatest and most severest signal of ungodliness in a man. And that is when he denies the proper management of God in his life. Look at this. Who have said... With our tongue, we will prevail. Now watch this. Our lips are our own. Who is Lord over us? Who's going to tell us what to do? A man who denies all authority is a man already ungodly. For God's kingdom works on authority structures. The ultimate destruction of a man is when he answers to no one higher than himself. Because when he does that, he makes himself out to be God, unaccountable to any higher power. Now, this is the problem that America has right now. We were founded by a nation of men who held themselves accountable to a higher authority. That influences every decision. But this ungodly man says, our lips are our own. I can say anything I want. Who's going to tell me what to say? Who's going to be Lord over us? Those are the causes of ungodly manhood. So let's review now. What we've learned is that family shepherding or fatherhood begins with godly manhood. 
And secondly, we learned that it requires faithfulness. You know, a broken clock, even a broken clock is right twice a day. <laughs> but what God's looking is men that are as steady as the needle to the pole, can always count, faithful men, always the same, always keeping their word. Now, those are the first two things we learned. We discussed the causes of an ungodly manhood. But now, watch this, because principles must be converted into behaviors. A man must do away with what I call the performance gap. Let me see if I can draw you one. Here's two cliffs here, and there's this big gap in the middle. Over here is what a person says they believe, and over here is actions. And in the middle, we've got the biggest performance gap you ever saw. That gap must be closed. Principles must be converted into behaviors. Now, look at the scriptures. Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, because otherwise you're deceiving your own selves. This is not going to work. A father cannot tell a child what to do and then do something different himself. So, and look at this scripture. To him that knoweth to do good and doesn't do it, now, now to him it, look at this, it's sin. In fact, Jesus asked the same question. Why do you call me Lord and do not the things which I say? The word Lord means ruler, boss, manager. Why do you sit, call me Lord, but you don't do anything I say? It's a waste of time. Scriptures, Jesus said, not everyone that says Lord shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that does stuff, see? Now, principles must be converted into behaviors. Fathers are to be the incarnation of principle. Now, in addition, let's put it down this way. Fathers are to be the worthy examples. Children's children are the crown of old men, and the glory of children is their father. The glory of children is the father. They are to be the heroes of their child. Now, when a man has this glory, is this hero, this glory will be transferred to others. Adam lived 130 years old. He begat a son. Look, at he begat a son in his own likeness and after his own image. That's exactly what a father must be and what a father should be. Why? Because children really become what their fathers are. Now, I want you to take this a step further because this glory conquers iniquity. Now, iniquity is a big issue. Failing to be a father is not called a sin by God. It's called iniquity. But iniquity is big stuff. Let me show you how I know that. Iniquity was one of the four reasons Jesus went to the cross. He was bruised for our iniquities. Iniquity turned Lucifer, one of the top three archangels, into the devil. Remember, thou was perfect in all thy ways, Lucifer, until iniquity was found in you. Now, watch these scriptures now. For the Lord God is merciful, gracious, long-suffering, and full of goodness and truth. Now, watch this. He keeps mercy for thousands of people. And he forgives iniquity and transgression and sin, but he will no, by no means clear the guilty. Look at this now. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children under the third and fourth generation. Fathers must conquer iniquity. How do you do that? You do that by following the good shepherd. Because, well, and I'll deal with more of this later, but right now you need to know that if the sheep will follow the shepherd, the lambs will follow the sheep. An old poem I learned years ago. "'Twas a sheep, not a lamb, that strayed away in the parable Jesus told. A grown-up sheep that strayed away from the ninety and nine in the fold. 
And why for the sheep should we seek and earnestly hope and pray? Because there is a danger when sheep go wrong, they lead the lambs astray. Because lambs will follow the sheep, you know, wherever the sheep may stray. When sheep go wrong, it won't take long till the lambs are as wrong as they. And so with the sheep, you fathers, we earnestly plead for the sake of the lambs today. For when the sheep are lost, what a terrible cost the lambs will have to pay. Now we have several more sessions together. And our next session is Fathering for the Fatherless, God's Solution for Fatherless Children. Don't miss it. Thank you.